Alerted by a sneeze, you rush to your appointment, battling severe fever in a chaotic parking lot. But something's off. The clinic is locked, and through the glass, frantic healthcare workers huddle around flickering monitors. A news headline pops up on your phone, sending a shiver down your spine. Ransomware cripples healthcare systems. The chaos unfolds. Across 150 countries, 300,000 computers are infected, their files locked away like a cruel hostage situation. A message demands a ransom in Bitcoin, threatening to erase everything forever, if not paid. This is WannaCry, a monstrous ransomware unleashed by North Korean hackers. Unlike most attacks, WannaCry doesn't rely on tricky clicks. It exploits a weakness in outdated computer systems, and many hospitals, unfortunately, fit the bill. 20,000 appointments vanish, replaced by a desperate scramble to find a solution. The clock ticks down, each second a hammer blow on the hopes of countless patients. Will doctors pay the ransom or face the loss of vital medical records? Can anyone stop this digital siege? This is the story of WannaCry, a cyber attack that shook the world. The young researcher who helped stop the spread of the WannaCry ransomware virus has been arrested. Hundreds of thousands of computers around the world were hit by a computer virus called WannaCry. It's the biggest cyber attack of its kind in history. Mondays usually weren't exciting, but this one started with a surprise email. Your appointment was rescheduled, a ripple effect from the ransomware attack. The good news? WannaCry seemed to have vanished overnight. The bad news? Doctors still couldn't access your records. Behind the scenes, a quiet hero stepped forward. A blogger named MalwareTech, known for his quirky cybersecurity research, stumbled upon something strange. He was picking apart WannaCry's code, like a detective examining a crime scene, when he spotted a weird web address. Why stick a useless website in the middle of villainous ransomware? Curiosity gnawed at MalwareTech. He spent a mere 10 bucks to register the domain, and boom. Just like that, 300,000 infected computers were freed. It was like flipping a giant off switch on a global nightmare. Millions of dollars in potential ransom payments vanished. The media went wild. Who on earth is this malware tech? They clamored. We need to sing his praises. But malware tech, a true tech knight, preferred the shadows. No thanks, he said. Attention gives me the heebie-jeebies. The media, like a dog with a bone, dug deeper than a mole at a disco. And they finally found a 22-year-old named Marcus Hutchins living with his parents in England. Suddenly, his quiet life was a whirlwind of reporters and flashing cameras. His mother refused interviews on his behalf, and he didn't have time to entertain the noise. His work wasn't done yet. Because the domain registration was like a ticking time bomb, if it lapsed, WannaCry could come roaring back. Marcus knew he had to act. He shifted gears, becoming a tireless educator. He urged everyone to update their systems, to patch the holes WannaCry exploited. He fought fire with knowledge. The fame wasn't fading, so Marcus did what any self-respecting hero would do. He hopped on a plane to Las Vegas for DEF CON, a massive hacker convention. Uh. 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 I look like a bag of money I'm on, they wanna know what I'm on. She got diamonds dancing on my neck, that is the vibe I'm on. Drip. Way too lit, who gon' check? You can tell me none. Uh. There, amongst his peers, Marcus wasn't just a guy who stopped a cyber attack. He was a legend. Fellow hackers worshipped him, buying him drinks and showering him with praise. Even reporters, ever the opportunists, tried to win him over with free meals. His friends, sensing his exhaustion, chipped in to rent a swanky mansion with 30 rooms, a much-needed escape from the VIP events. DEF CON's final day arrived. Shaking off a hangover, Marcus ordered Uber Eats. As he grabbed his food, a black SUV across the street caught his eye. Was it paranoia? Nah, he brushed it off. He had a Big Mac to conquer, virtual dragons to slay, and a plane to catch. Exhausted and with a stomach churning from potential jet lag, Marcus joined the boarding line for his luxurious first-class seat home. But before he could board, a cold hand clamped on his shoulder. Escorted to a dingy back room, two FBI agents grilled him for hours. By the time the interrogation wrapped up, Marcus's flight was long gone. Just when things were starting to look up, a bombshell dropped, an arrest warrant. But why? 
a British cybersecurity researcher who helped thwart the spread of a ransomware attack in May, has been arrested for allegedly trying to steal bank account passwords. 23-year-old Marcus Hutchins was detained in Las Vegas on his way back to Britain from DEF CON, an annual gathering for hackers. He's been charged with creating and distributing malware known as the Kronos Banking Trojan. The news comes as a surprise, as Hutchins is credited with cracking the WannaCry ransomware attack, which held hospital records hostage. The banking malware Hutchins allegedly built infects browsers, capturing usernames and passwords when a user visits a banking site. The charges state Hutchins and another person, whose name has been redacted, conspired between July of 2014 and July of 2015 to sell the malware. Backtrack a few years. At 14, Marcus wasn't saving the world. He was joining a hacker club, a place to test and hone his skills. His first project, a password stealing program, earned him high fives from his online buddies. But when the school systems got hacked, authorities pointed the finger at him. Suspended from using school computers, Marcus found himself drawn deeper into the online world, his reputation as a skilled coder growing. That's when he met Vinny, a shadowy person who offered him a tempting proposition create a custom rootkit, a program that burrows deep into a computer, unseen and unheard of, granting total access. Vinny would handle the distribution, and they'd split the profits. For a 16-year-old passionate about coding, the chance to get paid for his skills was too good to pass up. A partnership not exactly built on rainbows and sunshine was formed. Things took a turn when Marcus complained about the lack of good, well, let's just say stress relief. Vinny wished him a happy 17th with a not-so-subtle package. Suddenly, thousands of dollars in Bitcoin and the knowledge that Vinny knew where he lived made the deal a lot less sweet. Vinny came knocking again, this time wanting an upgrade for his rootkit, new features that would let him steal money online. This was way beyond the ethical line for Marcus. He refused, but Vinny wasn't known for taking no for an answer, so he chose to threat Marcus. With threats hanging over his head, Marcus caved, adding a keylogging feature. Vinny, ever the businessman, found another programmer to do the rest, leaving Marcus feeling trapped, dirty, yet still collecting a hefty paycheck. The root kit, named after a powerful Greek titan, Kronos, started selling for a hefty price tag, and Marcus, through his online associate Randy, was making a lot of money, and the source was conveniently hidden. Randy was also looking for a banking-focused hacking tool like Kronos. Marcus, keeping his own involvement under wraps, offered some general advice without revealing his connection to the program. Then, disaster struck. A power outage caused a technical glitch and Randy lost a chunk of his Bitcoin, $5,000 worth. Feeling terrible, Marcus decided to come clean. He revealed his connection to the Kronos creators and offered Randy a free copy of the program to make up for the loss. He'd fixed his mistake, but a bigger realization dawned he'd revealed his identity to a stranger. Paranoia about getting caught by the authorities set in. Marcus cut ties with both Kronos and Vinny, distancing himself from that dark world. He decided to use his experience for good, taking everything he'd learned, analyzing root kits, his own work on Kronos. He started an anonymous blog under the alias Malware Tech. The blog focused on in-depth analysis of hacks. As new hacking tools came to light, Marcus would dissect them, explain their mechanics on malware tech, and even wrote his own tracking program to infiltrate and monitor botnets, large networks of infected computers. His insights were invaluable, catching the attention of Salim Nano, CEO of a cybersecurity firm called Cryptos Logic. Nano offered Marcus a job, and for the second time, Marcus turned his passion into a legitimate career. Jailed and facing arrest, Marcus had one phone call option, he used it to reach Nano, who in turn alerted the cybersecurity community. Unaware of his past, the community rallied behind him, offering their support. The cybersecurity community sprang into action. They tried to raise $30,000 for bail, but a snag emerged. Some of the donations came from stolen credit cards. Luckily, a friend named Tara Wheeler, another security whiz, started a secure fundraising campaign that got Marcus out. Free, but not exactly in the clear. The FBI had evidence, those messages with Randy, that linked him to Kronos. Marcus pleaded not guilty, hoping for a deal. 
Negotiations started in 2018. The deal? Reduce charges in exchange for information on Vinny and other hackers. The problem? Marcus couldn't give them much on Vinny, and he wasn't comfortable throwing other people under the bus. So, instead of a lighter sentence, he got four more charges added on. A year later, a final deal was struck. Marcus would plead guilty to two charges, wire fraud and selling a device for illegal interception. Both came with potential jail time and hefty fines. In return, all other charges would be dropped. This is how things often work in court, a plea bargain for efficiency. Nearly 99% of federal criminal cases end this way. So two years after being a hero, Marcus, now considered an adult for sentencing purposes, was facing jail time for a crime he committed as a teenager in another country. With little chance of walking free, his only defense? I used my skills for good now. Luckily, the judge saw the good in Marcus. He acknowledged that Marcus had turned things around well before being arrested. For that reason, instead of jail time, Marcus received a short period of supervised release, basically a way to keep an eye on him and make sure he stayed on the right track. Let's rewind. Marcus, a young hacker, saves countless lives by stopping a massive cyber attack. Then, fame finds him, and his quiet life explodes. He escapes to a hacker conference only to be detained by the US government. They try to pressure him for information, then offer a deal. Admit guilt and go free. It wasn't perfect, but it was a way out. Was it fair? Maybe not. Marcus was used as an example, a way to scare other young hackers. But there was a silver lining. The judge recognized Marcus's good work and gave him a second chance. So where is Marcus now? Well, there's a good chance he's jetting around the world, first class no less. He might even be giving a talk at a conference, facing a sea of people, despite his fear of public speaking. This whole ordeal actually boosted his online reputation. With over half a million followers across social media, Marcus can pretty much do whatever he wants, career-wise. And the money? Well, that's likely to follow as he continues doing what he does best, using his coding skills for good. So that's how the former prophet of darkness became a shining light in the cybersecurity world. Always remember that, in the world of cybersecurity, the line between hero and villain can be thin as a line of code. I've had people sort of inundating me with messages thanking me, saying that I'm a hero. I mean, I sort of just registered this domain for tracking and I didn't intend for it to like sort of blow up and me to be all over the media. I was just sort of doing my job and I don't really think that I'm a hero at all. I've still been working, of course, for my company, Cryptos Logic. We've been trying to provide these sort of the IP addresses to NCSC, the FBI, so that victims can be not, uh, notified. Um, I've been having queries from like certs around the world. Obviously, journalists are sort of inundating me with the queries. So yeah, we're just pretty much business as usual, except I have not had any sleep in three days. <laughs> uh, my lovely boss has offered me an all expenses paid vacation to Las Vegas and to uh, Los Angeles as well. So I'm going to head out on maybe next week in a week's time. I'm going to chill out there for a bit and then come back to work. So my name is out in the papers, sort of my general location is. So I don't think I'm ever going back to being the malware tech that no one knew.